So a while ago, a viewer of mine reached out to me asking if he can borrow the Wilsonton R8. You know what's really funny? If somebody reached out to me, a viewer, a subscriber, asking me to lend him like five bucks, I'll be like, uh, let me think about it. But if they ask, can I borrow your $500 integrated amp? I'm like, sure, sure, go take it. Why is that? Never understood that. Anyway, in return, he said, Thomas, why don't you try the Raisong, Raisong A10? It's pretty good. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Given the fact that uh, Sean reviewed it and he thought it was fantastic, I was definitely very curious. So once I got it, tried it, I messaged Sean right away and say like, wow, this thing is actually pretty good. And um, I posted it on my community page and a lot of you, a few of you actually asked if I can review it. You know what? I am not going to review it, okay? But I'm going to talk about it, my impressions, because I didn't spend a lot of time with it and I didn't try tube rolling. Just I just don't have the time. But regardless, I think it's still worth chatting about it. To take my pride away from me You don't ever listen And you live with your complaints So I told Sean, hey, uh, you're brave to recommend this unit because, you know, usually when people shop in this price area I personally will recommend things that have very strong base really tilt up top end things that will impress you the first few minutes when you listen to it the A10 is not about that. Interestingly, the person who borrowed my Wilsonton R8 told me he actually prefers the A10 over the Wilsonton R8 in his system. Now he has this old vintage speaker and that's the reason why, okay, if you meet as many audiophiles as I do, you'll realize quickly there is no such thing as the best. All a question of taste, number one, and number two, you never know until you plug it into your system. So the A10 for him, it's actually better. I can definitely understand. Because what caught me by surprise was the mid-range. You see, if you compare it to, let's say, the Doge 10, the top end, man, the A10 is not refined. I, think of it like this way. If I hit a triangle, if I listen to a triangle, ding, the A10, man, it's like, ding, it's not clean. With the Doge 10, it's like, ding, wow, clean. So when it comes to bass, yeah, I mean, you don't have the best separation. It can be a bit muddy compared to the Doge 10. Really fast, very clear. So objectively, I can break down every single part and I can tell you the Doge 10 is better. But I actually prefer the mid-range of the A10 over the Doge 10. This reminds me a bit of my, uh, this monoblock I have. These Onyx monoblocks, they're about 6 watts also. And if I compare it to my Doge 10, I can tell you, yeah, in terms of creating that holographic sound stage, speed, bass control, yeah, the Doge 10 wins. But the sweetness in the mid-range, I prefer the monoblocks. And that's just how the way it is. The Doge 10 can keep up and beat it in many uh, areas. But the sweetness of the mid-range, nope, it cannot. And I was asking, uh, chatting with a friend online and he told me maybe it's because this is single-ended, this monoblock. And that's why there's the sweetness to it. And the A10 also is single-ended. So, don't know. Maybe that's what engages me. I enjoy listening to it. And this is the only reason I'm making this video. It's because I like the mid-range of the A10. Everything else, whatever, you know image, uh, stereo imaging, air, separation, oh, okay, I mean, for two, three hundred bucks, it's fantastic. But if its mid-range was not that engaging for me, I won't bother talking about it. So, ultimately, my recommendation is this, okay? If you're planning to get it as your main system, like this is your only one, okay, do some more research, you want to make sure that this is what you want to get because you're not going to get your chest pounding bass. It's not about that. You're not going to get that ultra fine refined detail. It's not about that. Okay. And I am driving it on a Silverline Sonata 93 dB that doesn't dip below 7 ohms. Well, that's, that's what I read. Luckily, I have such an efficient speaker so I can drive it at normal listening volume. Don't even try to push it beyond that. All right. And even with that efficient speaker, you can tell that it's not effortless. 
So, well, compared to the Doge 10, the Wilsington, so there is a gap. But when it comes to vocal, I actually enjoy it more. And that's how it is. So if you're planning to get it for your second system or third system or fifth system, and you want to experience this sweetness, yeah, okay, go for it. Have I tried tube rolling on it? No, I have not. Um, I just don't have the time. So uh, maybe I will try it before I give it back. If I have any different findings, I'll post it in the comments somewhere. But for now, I would say um, this is a very interesting integrated amp. Good, interesting. I did speak to Lee at ChinaHiFiAudio.com and uh, we we're talking about what about if we change the tubes in the front to something that's more mainstream so we can do tube rolling. Yeah, they'll take it away. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's better that way, right? The fact that yes, we can tube roll, but sometimes it's the combination of these tubes that gives it that specific magic. Who knows? So uh, that's my take on the Ryzong A10. And the person who bought it actually preferred it over the 300B version, the A50, I think. So that's come down to, again, what I always say, it's really a question of taste. All right, so let's end the video at this point. Now, if you want to know how it sounds, just go watch Sean's video at Zero Fidelity. He described it perfectly. Now, I'll give you something to think about before I let you go, okay? I know on the internet, everyone's talking about it and praising how amazing it is, how it sounds better than something that's many times its price and so forth. Anyway, these days, everything sounds better than whatever there is out there many times its price. For me, who has experience trying different kind of integrated amp, if I stand back and I look at it objectively, I would say that this amp does not reach, let's say, what the Doge 10 can do when it comes to airiness, soundstage, speed, bass slam, and so forth. Okay, this is subjective. So if you're buying this amp thinking that it's going to perform five times its price and it's going to reach the Doge 10 level, I'm sorry to tell you, no, it does not. However, I do stand by what I said there, where that one thing it does well, it does exceptionally well. And for me, what you're buying is that just one thing. And is it worth it? Well, for you to decide. So make sure you do have efficient speakers. Oh, Thomas, what about that Musical Paradise MP301? You know what? I didn't get to hear it with my Silverline Sonata at the time. I didn't get to hear it with EL34s, so I don't know. So in short, I think for the price, 200 something plus whatever shipping at ChinaHiFiAudio.com, you are getting something special. Just keep your expectations realistic. All right, with that, I'll see you next time. I never thought